There are folks out there who believe our minds start as blank slates, or tabula rasa, ready to be scribbled on by experience. They insist on tasting a burrito to know what it's like, rather than deducing its flavor through pure logic. Empirical evidence is derived from observation or experimentation, rather than from theory or logic alone. In contemporary science, the expectation is to support findings with strong empirical data. In philosophy, when someone discusses whether evidence is empirical, they are usually referring to how knowledge was obtained. If you know something is true because of sensory observation, it is called empirical. This contrasts with knowledge obtained through logic and reason without the need for observation. Empirical evidence is often referred to as a posteriori evidence. The OG of Western empiricism was Aristotle. He was all about observing nature and drawing conclusions from what he saw. Unlike Plato's abstract theory of ideal forms, Aristotle relied on observation and empirical evidence to develop general principles about nature. The empiricism party really got started in the 17th and 18th centuries, with John Locke as its charismatic DJ. His essay concerning human understanding was like dropping the philosophical base. Since then, empiricism has been the cool kid on the British philosophical block, with David Hume and George Berkeley joining the crew. Inspired by scientific advancements, Hume proposed a science of man focused on understanding human nature and society through observation and empirical methods. This approach laid the groundwork for modern social sciences like economics, sociology, and anthropology. Kant's philosophy is often described as a synthesis of empiricism and rationalism. Empiricism is in contrast to rationalism, and essentially both can be boiled down to epistemic stances on the notions of truth. While rationalists were doing mental gymnastics in continental Europe, empiricists in Britain were out poking things with sticks and taking notes. They believed that observing the world was the only way to truly understand it. It's like the difference between armchair detectives and Sherlock Holmes actually hitting the streets. These positions do not concern the definition of knowledge or the imperfections of human sensory perception. They address whether experience and sensory interaction with the world are necessary for gaining knowledge or whether knowledge can be obtained purely through rational thought. While some individuals might rely solely on reason, they eventually encounter the challenge of justifying reason itself, as it may be rooted in experience. This raises the question of how we can know that our experiences are a reliable source of knowledge for constructing rational thought. If you enjoyed this empirical journey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next sensory experience.